Now I'm going to be pulling in dynamics into other videos. When we get into like edge extrusion retopology, there's some dynamic stuff you can do in there as far as, you know, snapping verts and pushing topology or snapping topology to different bodies. And again, if you want to see that in action, just go to my YouTube channel, my station page, and just you can see this, you know, here's we're using dynamics to collide with collision surfaces. And we're using uh, smooth brushes with dynamic turned on to smooth uh, verts over a collision surface, all that good stuff. Also using micro poly and dynamics, which we've talked about a bit, uh, to kind of make maybe some nets uh, to go through here and collide and get some interesting effects out of there. Using dynamic simulation on hard surface objects. And what we're going to jump into now, which is going through here and uh, simulating tubes. So you can see micro poly is actually made the girders and the floor. And then of course cloth you can simulate and of course straps you can simulate. But you can also simulate, you know, here's some straps. It's basically just geometry that you simulate and you run simulation on it. You mask one side and it's good to go. Um, as far as like these tubes, however, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with uh, tubes. So let's go ahead and recreate that. So let's go out of edit mode here. It's a control N. And we'll just grab a plain 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And another, let's turn off, well, let's go ahead and rotate this around. So we're going to make like a ceiling or a floor, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Now we're going to turn off floor collision here. We're going to keep gravity on. And for here, let's go into geometry, turn on dynamic, turn down smooth, turn micro poly on. And we're going to choose this grid uh, option. So when I choose that one, you're going to see uh, it's giving us like a lattice work. Again, if you want to see how this thing is operating, just hold down alt and click that grid and you can actually go and see like what this model is composed of, how it's set up, any modifications you want to make. Well, again, we'll go back to that plain 3D that we're working with here. And I want to simplify this. So when, you know, we just dragged out a plane and made it a poly mesh 3D. So that means we can reconstruct back through subdivision and kind of get a lattice that we like. So I'm going to hit control Z. I think this is the right amount that I want to kind of play with. So we're going to go ahead and delete higher. And I'm going to make this real geometry. So I'm going to say, uh, apply next to dynamic and now this is real geo when we're doing collision services remember when we did the head and we were colliding it was having a little bit of problems so what I'm going to do is go over here to geometry modify topology and we're going to go ahead and say close holes so now you got a nice closed mesh it's still pretty complex but when we go over here and calculate our collision volume um, I think it'll do fine now it's going to tell you uh, collision volume can only be uh, calculated for non-visible subtools and we only have one subtool in our scene so of course if we want we can append another plane, take this plane and rotate it. And if you want to see it, let's go back again, back down here to geometry, dynamic. Uh, go ahead and crank that thickness up here. Let's go ahead and rotate it around, put it above our mesh. And now again, calculate that collision volume, run the simulation, and now it'll simulate uh, on that underlying mesh. Now there's not an actual, a lot of geometry here. It's, it's preview geometry. So if we go in here to dynamic, it's pretty chunky. Uh, so I'm going to hit control D or hit divide. That'll give us more subdivisions to work with. If we want to see those, we can turn off polyframe and then turn that back on. You can see we get more geometry to kind of simulate. And then we can turn dynamic back on. We can run that simulation. And now it's going to collide a little bit cleaner with that underlying surface. So cool. We have a cool floor and a cool girder. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off our floor plane because uh, we don't need to see that uh, to kind of play around with. So we can drop a sheet on there. We can move it around, whatever we need to do. We have a nice cool collision surface. If you need more resolution, if this, again, when we talked about collision surfaces and how the resolution worked, if you need more resolution, just crank this up. But this resolution seems to be doing fine. So what I'm going to do with this plane here, I'm going to go back down to subdivision level one. I'm going to say delete higher, and that's going to give me back my original geometry. It still looks subdivided, but that's because we have dynamic with smooth subdiv up to two. I take this down to zero. This is the actual geometry we have, and we can also turn down thickness to zero, and we're just left with this plane again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plane as kind of a surface to put some stuff on. And that stuff I'm going to put on, I'm going to go out of edit mode, I'm going to hit control N. And if you've watched any of my YouTube videos or my art station page, again, if we go back to my YouTube channel, I'm just going to type in controlling. And there's a bunch of uh, videos on like controlling curves and different ways you can utilize curves within ZBrush. One really easy way is uh, tube creation. Uh, long story short, we're not going to get too heavy in this, but I'm going to make a poly mesh 3D, go into edit mode. We're going to go down here to initialize and we're going to say Q cube resolution of one just to give us this nice simple cube. And actually now that I think about it, let's do this. A, res a Q grid with a resolution of one will work just fine too. Uh, so I'm going to go through here because all we're basically doing is making a tube mesh. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep it simple because we can use dynamic properties in order to make this work. 
So we have a uh, basic tube mesh. Of course, there's not a whole lot of divisions in here. So if we were to uh, use dynamics on this, it would just be a flat plane with, you know, four verts basically. So we're going to go through here with our Z-Modeler brush, B, Z, M. And we're going to hover over this edge. We're going to hit the space bar. We're going to say insert multiple edge loops. And we're just going to pull up and add some more divisions along here. Uh, if you wanted to be all one poly, you could just say control W. And there's one more thing we need to do, because right now we could simulate this and it would simulate fine like a little noodle. Uh, but if we want to put an IMM curve along here so we can swap this mesh out with, say, a more complex tube or even like, you know, a bike chain or any any number of things, what we need to do is we're going to go back in here, uh, hover over, an, again with your Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, hold down the space bar, say insert multiple edge loops, and now we're just going to put one loop right down the middle here. Uh, we're going to hover over an edge one more time, hold down space bar, and we're going to do poly group, poly loop. So when I click on this edge here, it's going to color this side uh, a different color. That's a new poly group loop. So the cool thing about this is if I go up here to my stroke menu and I say frame mesh and I turn off everything but poly groups, when I hit frame mesh, it's going to put a curve right down the middle of that. And what I can, what I can now do is go to B, I, that's going to narrow it down to my insert mesh brush curves. Uh, if I go over here to say the IMM curve brush, any brush in here, you can either go through here and cycle through them and click one, or you can hit M on your keyboard. I can go ahead and take this necklace link, and if I tap that one and then tap on my curve, that'll update that curve with that necklace link. Uh, just a quick refresher on how IMM curves work. Uh, if I'm over the mesh, it's going to turn blue, and that's going to allow me to modify this curve. I'm going to click Control Z over that. If I move my brush away, it's going to turn red. So if I tap S on my keyboard or I go up here to draw size, I can make my brush size bigger or smaller. I prefer to do S and uh, just, you know, grab it right here. So I'm going to crank this draw size up and then retap my mesh. You're going to see that's going to make that curve uh, even bigger. So I can go through here and update that. So now I have this dynamic curve that can be replaced. Now, another thing to consider, if I go out of this, and just undo back to where we just have geometry. I can also go in here to our dynamic, just turn on dynamic here. Uh, let's turn smooth subdiv down to zero. Let's turn micro poly on, and let's choose maybe this uh, tube brush right here. So we're gonna say cloth 04, we're gonna choose that. If we turn off polyframe, you're gonna see it basically put this micro poly on every single face uh, that existed. And because we had that split down the middle, it gave us two ropes. Of course, if we turn micro poly off and turn polyframe back on, you can go back in here, hover over an edge and say, insert multiple edge loops, hold down alt and then tap. And that'll go ahead and get rid of that one. So when we turn micro poly back on, now you just have one rope down here. So you can also simulate this tube with a micro poly uh, replacement. So we'll go ahead and undo that. We'll get those two tubes back and we, we'll do both. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the top here and I'm going to hit B on my keyboard for brush. We're going to go down here and say create insert mesh. Say new. And now when I hit B again, there's going to be a new insert mesh down here. So I can go through here and I can just insert this tube all over the place. Now another thing I can do is I can go up here to brush, create, nano mesh brush. And what that's going to allow me to do is something even cooler. So I'm going to go back over here to our plane working scene that we had. So again, we have a plane here and it's uh, sitting on top of this girder. So let's try a couple things. If we want, I can hit B and now we have an insert mesh brush and we also have a nano mesh brush that has that uh, tube on there. So if I go through here now, it's already going to be set up to insert nano mesh on a poly. So I can go through here and I can drag out and it's going to, you're going to see that little, maybe a little bit difficult to see. They're going to see that that flat mesh here is being populated. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say hover over face, hit the space bar, I'm going to say insert nano mesh on polygroup all. This is all one polygroup here, so now as I click and drag out, every single face is going to get a nano mesh brush. Now this is a little intense, don't necessarily need that many. I'm going to scroll down here. We're going to get more into nano mesh later on in the series, but we're going to go down here to nano mesh and we're going to turn off show placement. So now you can actually see just the nano meshes happening. I'm going to continue down here and we're going to say random distribution. We're going to start cranking that up. And now what's going to happen is I'm going to start dialing in more tubes over my surface. I can also go in here. So you have rotation, so you can rotate these around and we can also add variance. So I can go through here and just kind of scatter uh, tubes around. I can also go through here and like change the overall length of the tubes. And of course the number, you know, random distribution, we can just drop that down to the number that we want. Now, Again, if we turn on show placement, these tubes are just sitting on top of that mesh. If I want to have them actually usable as a dynamic tube, what I'm going to need to do is go ahead and 
go down here to inventory, say one to mesh, or I can go up here to geometry and just say convert BPR to geo. Uh, I don't need this plane anymore, so I can hold down control shift and isolate it. Uh, if I want, I can control shift drag and then you do geometry modify delete hidden, or I can go up here to split and just say split hidden. If I want to keep this plane around, I can use it again. So I'll just go ahead and just turn that eyeball off and then go back up and tap on this uh, tube here, or our scattered tubes, I should say. So we have scattered tubes. So uh, with everything, you know, we'll recalculate the collision volume just in case. And now we can go through here and run the simulation. And now my tubes will go through here and simulate uh, right on top of those girders. Now, if you want, you can also go through here. You can say geometry dynamic. Let's go ahead and turn up our smooth subdiv by one. And then our thickness, we'll go ahead and crank that up. So now we can actually have tubes falling on each other. So as we run the simulation, you can actually just turn these into tubes. If you say, okay, go ahead and apply that. And now it's real geometry. And then you hit, uh, you know, dynamic again. Let's turn down thickness. And let's also go in here to crease, uncrease all. So it doesn't, incre uh, doesn't you know, crease uh, where our poly groups are. Turn smooth sieve up to two. You see, this is a result we get some like, you know, noodles hanging off here. Of course, they are a little bit flat. I would say if you're going to use this method, maybe on your original mesh, go ahead and make this, uh, don't, don't put that middle line down there. Now, speaking of that middle line, the reason we have that on there is if I go back, uh, let's go ahead and undo it back to where we actually had uh, dynamic with thickness applied. So again, we just have these flat planes. Uh, we can turn on dynamic to make them look thicker as we run the simulation. Gives us a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. But again, if we turn dynamic off, we're just left with these planes. And the cool thing about these planes is they have uh, this line down the middle. So again, we can go in here to stroke, frame mesh with poly groups, and then we can go back in here to BI brush insert, IMM curve, hit M, go ahead and grab you know, the necklace link and just tap those. And we can update all of these curves here with necklaces. So let's go ahead and make this bigger so we can see it. And now we have a bunch of necklaces uh, hanging over this. Now, of course, you can split those off into their own uh, sub tools. And, uh, you know, if we want to, we can say, okay, we like this, this is fine. Let's go ahead and you should be able to like tap off in a way and that'll go ahead and set it. If you, as an actual geometry that you can, you know, don't have to worry about manipulating those curves anymore. You can also go in here to stroke curve functions delete, go to my YouTube channel, go to my ArtStation page, you'll have a lot more information on the intricacies of IMM curves. I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritty in this series. But we still have those planes, those little, uh, you can see it's kind of masked out a little bit. The, so what we can do is we can now go in here to split mass points and we can use those planes again. Uh, they're just kind of hanging out here. Uh, so at this point, you know, so we have this subtool, and we got draped necklaces, and we're going to go here, and it's like, you know what, some of these I want to be necklaces, some of them I want to be something else. So I'm going to go through here and hold down um, control shift and drag over this one, control shift drag to invert that, and then as I hold down control shift alt, I'm just going to grab little pieces of these ones I want to change, control shift drag again to invert that selection, control shift A, which is uh, visibility, grow all, so anything that's vert welded, it's going to grab all those, and I'm going to go ahead and just split hidden, so now I have, you know, these tubes in this one, these tubes in this one. And again, I can go through here and I can say stroke, curve functions, frame my polygroup mesh, BI brush insert. Let's go over here to IMM army curve, hit M, grab a bike chain out of there. And now we can just update all of these curves with a bike chain. So if I go ahead and like tap off and say one more time, let's go into solo mode here split unmasked points. Now we have those curves sitting there in case I need them, but then this subtool is going to have my bike chain meshes, drapes. So now I can hold down shift, turn off everything except for the bike chain and our original girder mesh, and now we have these individual ones which have bike chains uh, being draped over. So now let's go ahead and we can delete our bike chains out of our scene and our necklace out of our scene. We don't need those anymore, but we still do have our uh, planes. If you want to put these into one uh, subtool you can, you just go down here to merge down, or you can just, you know, grab this set. 